classroom technology integration in support of student experience and achievement. This is module four, my responsibility. Welcome everybody. Hope you're having a great Tuesday, even though it feels like Monday to me. We're gonna start off with a warm welcome. We're gonna look back at what we did in module three. There is a link to the Jamboard. Take a look at the first and second slides on that because that will give you a refresher on what you thought you were going to be doing with module three global context. And then once you've found what you put in there last time, you can move on to page, actually page, which page is it now? Because it moved around a little bit. That page, which is page five. You'll want to move to page five after you've taken a look at the first two slides to find your response and let us know what you did for module three, what you did to, to implement uh, your commitment that you had previously about global context. First two slides and then the fifth slide to let us know how you did. So we've got students providing each other feedback, doing a mock interviews based on their resumes. That's cool. Tracking engagement and acknowledging retention. Great. Pair deck monitoring student work. Immediate feedback in that case. Yeah. Impacted student success in making changes to the presentation. Nice. Somebody used Spark, helped students improve their SMART goals. Modified a template. Students give excellent presentations. That's great. Google form pre-test and post-test. Check for understanding after a research project. Pear Deck took it a step further provided comments to the students about their Pear Deck responses. Awesome. Well, thank you for those of you who provided us with some feedback on how you did with feedback. And let's take a look at the rest of our presentation today. Welcome once again to Classroom Technology Integration in Support of Student Experience and Achievement. This is Module 4, My Responsibility. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Matthew Willems. I'm a digital coach, mostly with elementary schools, and I'd like the rest of the team to introduce themselves. Good morning, everybody. My name is Kaylee Paraccia, and I am a digital coach, mostly working with middle schools and some high schools. I'll go next then. Uh, I'm Luke Munda, Manager of Educational Technology, uh, and we have some people that are with us in spirit right now, uh, but are not here physically with us. So Brittany Horton is still out on maternity leave, taking care of a very 
cute little baby boy. Uh, Peter Douglas is enjoying some much needed rest on vacation and Brian is working with our VEX robotic teachers right now. Um, so they are all on our team supporting us all but aren't here physically with us today. I'm E.J. Rodriguez, and I am uh, the coach for secondary, uh, mostly high schools. And I'm Dre Aguirre, and I am a coach that supports primarily 612s and pathway schools. So we get started with our PDU session with DPS's equity statement. Racial and educational equity is our collective responsibility. We will achieve equity when we dismantle deeply rooted systems of oppression that have historically resulted in inequitable access and distribution of opportunities and resources for those who represent marginalized identities, including race, ethnicity, gender identity, sexual orientation, language, and ability. We will create conditions where we all belong, are included, and have a clear purpose, a why, and have the autonomy to lead in our respective areas. By creating these conditions, we will eliminate the predictability of success or failure for our students and team members. And this uh, completes our vision that every learner thrives. Educational equity is our collective responsibility. We prepare our students for career, college, and life. We create conditions for partnerships where students, families, and team members belong and thrive. Which brings us to the DPS experience. Um, what we are looking for as a system is, of course, having a student's uh, interest in the, the center and having a student experience that helps them make, um, fulfill their dreams and build their reality. We also don't want to forget that adults need to have a very, uh, an excellent experience also in a culture that is collaborative, uh, based on the mindsets uh, with a diverse workforce that is engaged in the work. We also uh, want our system to be based on equity and excellence, transparency, uh, a system that is influential and coherent, which will bring us then to what we call one DPS, where all learners thrive, as Kelly was um, talking about a, a little bit earlier. All learners thrive and uh, everybody um, contributes in what we call one DPS. And just a quick reminder that you should be using the academic technology menu under the district reporting section to make sure that there is an opportunity for parents in the community to see what digital tools you're using in your classroom. If you have any problems using the ATM, just let your digital coach know and we can help you out. Thank you. All right, so we are going to ground ourselves in this session in our CRE mindset of my responsibility. So we're really going to focus on creating an environment where our students are going to learn and thrive in our classrooms. And more specifically, we're going to take a look at DPS practice two, key action three, which talks more about collecting student work, analyzing that, and adjusting your instruction based on that. So all of these sessions are going to give you different ways and avenues where you can achieve this in your classroom. And we are also going to ground ourselves in the two big buckets that DPS has this year for goals, and that is grade level text and tasks and having a safe and welcoming environment. Very specifically to drill down from that larger uh, goal this year is that we're going to be looking at practice three from the grade level text and task um, PII. So this is what we are looking for actually implementing that grade level text and task into the classroom and these are the look fors as to how we're going to achieve that. You're also going to see these look fors and how they're applying to each of our breakout rooms today. Um, as we really re want to drill down into what students are doing in the classrooms and how we can all work together to actually get that into our students' hands. 
Also, we're going to be talking a lot about data collection today. So you're probably thinking Illuminate, which is our all-in-one platform for gathering data in DPS. Well, our team does know and uh, support Illuminate a little. Our, our experts and our people who are your main contacts for Illuminate are listed here on the screens and um, in the slides. So we have content and grade level experts from the assessment team that are going to be your Illuminate experts. So if you have any specific Illuminate questions, data, reports, these are the people that you can reach out to to really get that support. We will be talking about data today a lot, but Illuminate questions really need to go to this team um, because they are far more knowledgeable than us and really do this every single day. And here are the sessions for today. Uh, the strategy overview basically co co comprehend uh, using data to track student mastery. And we are going to focus on, uh, on these couple of tools, Schoology. We'll discuss mastery tracker, test quizzes, assessments, and advisory dashboard, and also the teacher portal. Session two is differentiation using read and write, an excellent tool to assess content for MLLs and also a Schoology Google Classroom doing individualized assignments. Session three is self-grading, check for understanding using Google Force and GameKit. And session four is for technology teachers and teacher librarians will be working with skill for innovation and storytelling with Scratch. I believe that um, Felicia is the one that is going to be leading that. So we actually, for um, for session four, that's just an 8 a.m. session. So if you are a tech teacher or a teacher librarian, you are going to want to hop into one of the three strategies above. Thank you, Andrea. Then uh, um, this is how we're going to manage the session. You guys are experienced on this, have been in a few already. We'll have a 60-minute breakout session using the different strategies and tools. There will be one or more or, or a couple of coaches in your session demoing the strategy and the tool and uh, being available to answer questions and provide support. Most of the time is breakout. We hope to spend it in breakout workshopping. And after the breakout session, there will be a 15 minute debrief. I believe that is at 11 when we go back to the main, uh, to the main meeting for the debrief. Here are the links, and I believe that Luke is going to be putting them in there in the chat for you so you can get to the different sessions. There is a link for session one using data to track student mastery. And then this strategy two on differentiation is the one ending in STZ. Strategy three is the one ending in PYD. And well, as Andrea was saying, those are the three for this part of the session. So Luke is going to put one more link there. And we are hoping that you guys um, get to those sessions and uh, that have a, an excellent rest of the morning and kind of trying those different tools and strategies. With that said, I think that you guys have located and made decisions about the choice that you're going to, to implement and go to those sessions. So we'll be getting there 